Real Flight 9.5 S. The most realistic yet. Well, we'll see about that. The box contents are certainly realistic, including the installation instruction card. Some swag goodie offers. And installation code card. And no, you can't have my code. Manual shows complete layout of transmitter switches and features. Speaking of transmitter, it's a hardwired USB type. The gimbals generally felt pretty good. Though the throttle seemed a little tight for my taste. Lots of the same type of switches you would find in a real transmitter. And even some slider switches on the back of the transmitter. Three additional simulator buttons are on the bottom for quick menu options. Interestingly, there is a feature that allows you to make the left throttle stick self-centering. I presume this is primarily for drones. Even a trainer cord port is included. Digital trims, of course. And gimbal tension adjustment screws. All in all, a really impressive and feature-packed transmitter. New with 9.5S is the lack of installation disc. So you must use the Steam Game Distribution Service, which is free. You can use the add a product option and enter the code included with the transmitter to add the program to your library. The Steam client may be new to some, but I think it's a good idea as it now allows easy updates to the simulator for future releases. Once installed, plug in the transmitter to a USB port. Be sure to use a powered USB hub if you can. You can run the program from the desktop or from the Steam client. If running from the Steam client, you will get the option of running in virtual reality, which we'll try out later. The very first time you load the sim, it will ask you to calibrate the transmitter. The visual calibration guide is foolproof and pretty quick. After that, we're ready to go. First thing I noticed is that the flight mode switches were already set up. Looking at the aircraft selection, you will see tons of models to choose from. You can even use the mouse to rotate angles and look at detailed stats. This bulldog caught my interest, and it was off to the races. Real Flight 9.5S is visually attractive with shadows, photorealistic backgrounds, and extra wide monitor support. Sound effects are great, with lots of nuances and sound effects if you really listen for them. The auto zoom camera field of view is very helpful in maintaining situational awareness. Not only are there numerous models, but a surprising number of airfields to choose from as well. Some are relatively famous, and some not so much, but all help to add a lot of variety in landscapes. Besides the core photorealistic fields, there are quite a few whimsical fields as well. There's one that appears to be from Waco, Texas, which I'm sure I've visited before. There's also the very well-known Santa Clara field, famous for its crash videos. A pirate-themed landscape. A Japanese temple. And this snazzy aircraft carrier, which looks to scale. So let's take a look at many of the other options. The simulation tab has selections for scenarios, physics, and graphics options. And even how your model can fail in flight. Some interesting import and export options are available too. Moving on to the aircraft tab, we see the before mentioned aircraft selection and editing. 
plus color scheme options, and a quick engine kill key. Environment option has the airfield menu along with natural effects such as sun position, thermals, and wind controls. Gadgets look interesting. I'll get to them in a moment. Multiplayer has its own tab with lots of options. You can record your session for posterity, invoke to built-in training sessions, change camera views and associated detail and visual aids, and finally select various online help options. So let's take a look at some of the features in detail. First off is the scenario selector. These are preset situations that is a quick start to some fun things like this glider toe. You can practice being towed with another aircraft. I've done this in real aircraft and the sim was just like it. Except for hitting the tree part. And where else can you fly a blimp? Well, once I figured out how to make it go forward. You'll often need to figure out the transmitter switch function for the more exotic aircraft. It is not a blimp, it is an airship! There is even this, um, bowling. The slope soaring scenario is awesome, with expansive scenery, wind direction visual aids, and simulated turbulence. Just don't go behind the hill. I was curious about the failure options, which allow you to set the frequency and effective elements. But once I saw the instant failure button, I just had to try it out. Yep, it worked. <laughs> Challenges offer a scripted set of games to test your flying skills. They cover airplanes, like this balloon burst task. Helicopters with precision flying. various drone challenges. Returning to the gadget tab, I selected each one to see what they looked like, such as a navigation aid, a live transmitter overlay, zoomed in binocular view, aircraft view, A variometer, which is appropriately noisy. Onboard camera, if equipped. Stopwatch. Even a heads up display. A multiplayer info screen completes the gadget options. Good thing I have a wide monitor. <laughs> I want all the data. It can be a lot of info to put on the screen at once, but I like having the options, especially the Vario and Transmitter Mimic. And that HUD is pretty neat too. Training covers various aircraft types and is quite extensive. With more advanced lessons that unlock when you finish the basic modules. 
It uses natural English voiceovers and transmitter overlay to describe flight maneuvers. Flight training. And uh, before we can take off, we have to start by taxiing. And so we're going to use the left hand stick here, which controls the rudder. You can see the rudder moving back and forth and also the nose wheel is moving back and forth because that's what uh, actually steers the airplane on the ground. Hey, I finally learned what the sticks so that do. Way we can set up for a takeoff. When I get a little bit further down, I'm going to slow down here. Hello, my name is Brian Bremer. Today we're going to work on getting you up and hovering. The first thing I'm going to show you here is what the controls do while you're in flight. For just a few lessons, I was an expert. The aircraft hover trainer has harsh consequences for drifting out of the practice ring. Eventually, I got through my thick head just how to fly a stabilized hover. Mostly. Even helicopters are not immune. Though the auto-rotation trainer is pretty neat. Speaking of crashes, the crash modeling is more entertaining than you would think. With no two crashes being exactly alike. I was impressed with the variety of the damage modeling. Even water effects had their own unique modeling. <laughs> yeah, I like that too much. The modeling can get a bit silly at times. So one of the last things I really want to try out with this is the virtual reality. I understand that the real flight 9.5 is the first version that they support virtual reality, such as this HTC Vive that I'm using right now. So I'm really curious to see how the experience is flying in virtual reality versus unvirtual reality or something. Well, anyways, let's give it a shot. So you need to launch the simulator from the Steam client and select your VR device. In my case, the Steam VR mode. I was immediately captivated by the experience. Tracking the model's position in flight was just as easy in real life. You can tell I was fully uh, engaged. Wow, cool. This is great. The whole feeling of your depth of field, the cognizance. Uh oh, did something break? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Despite the slightly lower resolution of the VR headset, the improvement in situational awareness is worth a resolution hit. The last thing I tried was multiplayer mode. It was easy to find or make a connection. And once you're in, other players will phase in. Oh, you can hit each other. <laughs> Just keep your eye on your own plane. So I looked at the various features of the sim, but what about the general experience? 
Well, I found Real Flight 9.5S to be a very well done and realistic simulation. Flight modeling is very good, with each model having a unique feel appropriate to its type and design. Things such as mass effect and momentum seem to be modeled accurately. The sheer variety of models and airfields is amazing. It would take me a long time to get to try all the models and scenarios. Plus the ability to import additional community created airfields and models means a sim should never get stale. Real Flight is both an entertaining video game and a useful flying tool. You can use it if you've never flown a model before to teach you to fly or as an experienced pilot to practice new maneuvers. Developing muscle memory is an important skill to learn for everyone. No matter what your skill is, Real Flight 9.5 has what you need. Christine.